This is the Half Hour Podcast, recorded December 17th, 2012. Episode 126, Yearly Yeasty Yapping. Welcome to the Amp Hour. I'm Dave Jones from the EEV blog. And I'm Chris Gamble of Chip Report TV and Chris Gamble's Analog Life. What's up, Chris? Uh, happy holidays, Dave. Yeah, you too. It is getting... It just it just it's magically there. appeared, didn't it? It's, what is it today? The 18th? Us. Well, it's the 18th <laughs> yeah. here. I guess it's still oh, yeah. the 17th there, but yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. I was uh, fur- furiously on Amazon.com purchasing all of my, all <laughs> right. of my holiday gifts last night. <laughs> I think I got it all done in about an hour. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you tweeted something that yeah, I saw I did. yesterday. Was it about uh, dead trees? None of this electronic book stuff. Yeah, I've been buying books like crazy. I mean, it's booksmas for me. It's it's just crazy. It's I bought probably twelve twelve dead tree books. So I don't know. I don't wow. know all these predictions about yep. uh, the book is dead. But I. I Mm. My Amazon account has not gotten the news yet, so <laughs> right. What, all you, all you potential love, authors out there, you're fine. <laughs> what I love and the wife loves is um abebooks dot com, which is a second hand book oh, yeah? service. If you haven't used it, yeah, like uh, there, there's other ones out there, but it basically searches like all of these bookstores. You know, all these tiny bookstores that used to be around before the internet, right? Mm-hmm. They're actually still around, and but huh. now every one of them to stay alive has now put their entire every book in their store online, and you can search for it. So if you want to find some old book somewhere, they will. This will search every like tens of thousands of bookstores all across the planet. And they will hmm. ship you that book, and it's usually pretty cheap, you know. Nice. So I've I've any, bought uh, you know any electronics finds in there? Any like, uh, good, you can get good reference text. You can get those ones. Yeah, they're okay. they're out there. So uh, I because there's some, there's some wonky ones, right? I mean, there's there's sometimes you just can't find it. Like you'll go on oh, Amazon yeah, cool. or something, yep. and you'll see oh two used buyers that are like right. you know yeah, yeah. four hundred dollars a piece. You're like okay yeah sure <laughs> yeah no it's a similar thing exists on here but. But you can sort by price, you know. Then you get sort by price, uh, or you can yeah. sort by book condition and all that sort of stuff. Or you sort yeah. by cheapest postage, and you know. So I've ordered this obscure book from some little bookstore in some basement in, you know, yeah. New York oh, or something cool. like that, and they ship it to me for for like four dollars, you know. And oh yeah, like media uh, mail, right? Where it yeah, takes like yeah, like yeah. sixteen weeks, and you're and like, yes, ah, whatever. yeah, exactly. But yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Exactly. <laughs> Who cares? But it's great. Mm-hmm. And they, uh, I, I like that. I've almost, I don't think I've failed once to find something that I was after on there. Hmm. It's great. I you love know, it, it. Ma- it makes you wonder if like so so you know like we we've we've seen this with with our, our own industry right where everybody shifted oh digital everything's digital and now you know we're getting back to hardware and and makers and everything like that and you wonder if eventually there's going to be like a a revival of of like oh book binding and and oh, oh, right. that, that old <laughs> yeah. smell and collectors and I think someone mentioned on Twitter like like it'll become like the the retro LP you know like buy an album kind of thing like, <laughs> right. okay. but that'll be books it's like yeah that's fine with me I don't care you know <laughs> well, speaking of LPs don't some of the new some of the uh, recording studios actually still release songs on LP it's a specific they do. Yeah. version right they yeah, like, it, like it, it, it died houses. there for like 10 15 years right but then they yeah, discovered yeah. oh shit People actually pay two hundred bucks for the LP. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> <laughs> right. And some, I mean, some of them are like the audio fools, like you, like you talked about. But I mean, mm. uh, I, I think some some of them, you know, like like I, I have to represent my analog brethren. I mean, there there is <laughs> an interesting science behind it, right? I mean, if you look yeah, at yeah. like the actual physics of it, there there is a, a lot of data that is encoded in LP. And the interesting thing is if you look at an LP, actually, it's actually the, I think it's the width of the of the track, the actual, like, track that the needle runs over, mm. that actually determines the actual bandwidth. That's like a physical manifestation of <laughs> right. the bandwidth because the less total time you put on an LP, the more quality you can have in the sound. So, like, the, the longer LPs no, I that didn't you, know you that. get... Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So like the longer albums yeah. you'll see with it have right. you know six, seven tracks per side will have yeah. more of a compressed version. They actually have less range and frequencies and stuff. 
Wow, so it's almost this... like a old school <laughs> MP3. Yeah, exactly, right? Nice. This tidbit brought to you by Chris Gamble <laughs> and Log Life. <laughs> 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 oh boy yeah brilliant i like it yeah yeah but no cool. it's always going to be niche you know i mean yeah there's not going to right. be something i mean huge, the mainstream huge stuff will be low cost you know as digital mm. distribution is is going to stick around i mean it's it's yeah it's it's just it's going to be natural imagine if the semiconductor makers you know uh, uh, like here's a special limited edition paper data book <laughs> you know like right. Whoa, right they could probably do uh, that for the app notes right um, you mean like like a nice bound version? Yeah, yeah, you know, like a nice a, bound version of the app notes, a nice leather cover, and oh, you I'm know, guessing. It's I'm just... guess, you know, I've got paper versions of the old LT app notes, like the Jim Williams ones, and yep. And you you you're gonna have to pry those out of my cold dead fingers. Yeah, I mean, like right. you're not gonna <laughs> yeah. you're not gonna get Chuck those away Master from me. Style, <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, like you're gonna. You're, I mean, like honestly though, there there is something to be said for having paper on your on your bench. It's nice. I mean, like mm. you know, I've done yes. I've done research on you know e readers and you know having them at your bench and people talk about having iPads for for uh, mm. data sheets and everything like that. And I just it's still you know yep. even with the searchability that's nice, but. Yep. I don't want it. I, I want to flip, you know? Like, maybe this is my age starting to show, but <laughs> right. I there's know, something I to be said for it. I do that in the lab. I've got a printer right next to me, and my bench is like three meters, like two and a half meters behind me, right? And yeah. no, I will print something out to take it over to the bench so that, you know, like a data, like a page out of the data sheet. I won't print the whole thing, yeah. of course, but if I just want one page, and it's just right. so convenient and there. Yeah, I could probably have a tablet on my... Bench and you know call up the data. It's oh, it's just not the same. Like you can't write on it. You can't, you know. Right, right, exactly, uh, exactly. Yeah, and, and, and you know, or, maybe, or maybe like as, as stuff gets the camera, cheaper. Right, and, right. That's also true. Maybe maybe yeah. as like ebook e readers get cheaper though. Maybe you'll get you get people doing like like multi multi screen like you like doing with with actual LCDs. Right. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know, like three or four e readers all lined up. At that point, maybe it <laughs> right. makes sense. But uh, until then, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's tough it's, because like part of part of me wants like the you know like the hitchhiker's guide you know where like you open mm-hmm. it up and you know every, everybody wants that right it's just like the perfect source of information but on the other hand I, it's, there's something about it I don't I don't know if it's just maybe our younger listeners could could chime in about this because maybe they're more more attuned to the <laughs> to the digital only but not me yet I'm not there yet man I'm go, I'm going backwards nah. yep. <laughs> And recyclable paper, I you know, as long as paper's mm. recyclable, I don't feel guilty about it either. Mm. Plus, you well, know, I, f- I feel good about it, it, supporting Xerox, right? I mean, you gotta you gotta keep those guys in business, <laughs> right? <laughs> so retro. The, the the tablet on the bench though is an interesting concept because, like, when I'm doing a teardown and stuff, like I'm searching part numbers, right? I go, oh, I have no idea mm-hmm. what that part number is off the top of my head, and I search it, but I don't have a tablet here, right? I've got a notebook, but the notebook's inconvenient, yeah. sitting on the bench, it's all tied into the external monitor, and you know, you can't, yeah, sort yeah, of, you yeah. know. So, uh, you know, my mic, right? You know. I wear the lapel mic, but it's got like a five meter cord on it, right? So I can like extend it out, walk back in here to the desktop, and sort of you know peer at it and go, <laughs> "Oh, there's that right." But then right. by the time I've got toes uh, leaning over, yeah, right? yeah exactly, <laughs> <laughs> and the cords all tangled up and everything because yep, I don't yep. want to un- unclip it, right, or unplug it because right. then I'd be unplugging it ten thousand times, and. Um, so I, you know, and I've got to go back and forth, back and forth. So I'm back and forth to the desktop machine during a teardown, just trying to find, you know, these uh, part numbers. And then often, by the time I get back to the bench, oh, I've forgotten those specs because I'll, I'll try and I'll try and remember them, right? And I'll go, oh yeah, that chip has this bandwidth and it has this, you know, these features and this feature. And I've got to remember those five things yeah. <laughs> to go it's back tough, to right? the yeah, exactly. So right. so there is value There's... there. So I should probably get a. You know, a tablet would solve my issues there, but yeah, you got to remember yeah, to you charge know, the thing. And I've ah. looked at it. So, so actually, I talked to a, a former coworker who was who was go- he's a co-op actually. He was going to grad school, and he was looking at it because he was going to have to read a lot of papers and stuff. And he actually found one, and, it, and it's kind of pricey, but it's called like the I think it's the Onyx M ninety two, and it's actually an e reader, but it's mm-hmm. actually a full size ten inch tablet. And it's got all these different functions, and you can load Linux on it. It's not like Android or anything like that, but um, right. it, it's really nice looking. I mean, like, and, and that's what you need. That's what I found out because I actually looked at the mm-hmm. the the e reader I have. You know, you have you have the the paper white, and, and you're all into yep. Kindles. 
I have the Nook Simple Touch, and the Simple Touch is you know a six inch screen. It's definitely not big enough for a, a, mm. a PDF to render fully because that's that's the ultimate thing for a, a you know if you're looking at a data sheet, you need a PDF to render yes. like a piece of paper. Yep. And uh, so I, it's just, I would it's be just happy for enough. yeah. I you know you got to have the best tool for the job. Right, if you right. try and get your iPad to do it, it's like, you know, sometimes yeah, you've got to have a huge screen. It's got to render PDFs absolutely perfectly, and it right. doesn't have to do anything else. Like I'd be happy yeah. if it just had, you know, a wireless internet connection and a browser and a PDF viewer, and that's it. Yeah, no, you yeah, know? maybe you should I mean, check this out then. I mean, it's, yeah, it, it really I, does I'm, look nice. I'm having a look at it now. Yeah, it's a, it's like a four hundred dollar tablet or so. It, it's it's not cheap. I mean, like compared right. to like you know, you can get a lot of cheapies these days for yep. you know, especially Android devices and stuff. But, and you know, I've talked to you guys on Twitter about about you know actually using an iPad or even an Android device like a full size actually does work mm. really well and it's good for browsing. But you know, like if you're Here just it gonna is, stick it Onyx, at your bench, yeah, exactly. And it's got yeah. an e-ink display, which means it should get a much right. longer battery life, right? Right, which and it's easier on you your eyes and everything else, yeah. right? I mean, that's yep. that's the closest to paper you're going to get. And with that one, yep. you can write on it, too. That's the cool thing. So oh, you can I, write I really on did it. like that. Uh. Yeah. So, th- oh, boy, I might have just saw uh, <laughs> I might, I might need to start selling these things, right? <laughs> so you can so you can actually get a stylus out and, and yeah. e-ink right on top of it. Yeah, yeah. That's what I want because that, like, I can do that under the video because then I don't have to screen capture, right? Because oh, that's when true. I'm doing right. a teardown, right, if I want to look at a data sheet, right, then I've got to come back into the office. I've got to, you know, uh, turn on my screen capture, everything, browse. I've got to use right. a different mic, and then I've got to sync it up later with the, you know, and yeah. eh, it's all hard. But if that's I can, the, just I mean, whack... it's the same hassle as if you're at the bench, right? You don't want to go yeah, yeah. and you know have to type something in on top of a data sheet, right? You want to just write on mm. it, just like you yep. want to replicate your paper experience, yes. right? That's that's yes, the best exactly. case scenario. Oh, so I you know, know I, you I was trying to I was trying to sell this idea to distributors for a while. I was talking to like Element Fourteen and Digikey right. and everybody else, and I was I was saying, you know, if you could figure out a way where you could tacitly track, you know, maybe maybe anonymize everyone's data, but tacitly track what people are looking at, what they're interested in, you could sell that back to the actual chip vendors, right? And some people wouldn't mm-hmm. like that, but whatever. It's like if you, if you gave it away as a free tablet, then people might actually accept that kind of thing. You could actually display ads on there. I personally, if I could have that on my bench, I would totally take that kind of thing. I would take Absolutely. that. They, they would display ads. It's like, oh, okay, five-second ad for some new chip from, like, you know, National Semi... Or, sorry, te- mm-hmm. Texas Instruments. <laughs> National Semi doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, yeah, right. But, I mean, like, you look at a five-second ad, right? It's just, it's just programmed into our culture where you accept advertising these days. And then, you know, you get onto it and you look at the data sheet and whatever, no big deal. Or or say I'm looking at like a Maxim mm-hmm. part and there's a TI cross. TI pays to actually display that cross. Uh, cross, yeah. And, and yep. it's it's a really, like, but the problem was it was a really big expense up front, right? So like a $400 tablet, they're yep. not just going to give that away to anybody. So uh, I don't mm. know. Maybe, maybe it'll work in the future, but I, th- I think that's a hell of a business model. Uh, there, I don't know. There's an idea there. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Totally so, agree. You know, any Ooh. any enterprising listeners, uh, you guys should get on it. Because <laughs> I want one of those. I'll pay. I'll, I'll take one of those for free. I don't care. <laughs> you know, even even if you like, you had to put in a credit card number. So like, if you just took it and ran, you know, you could then just charge for it and, right. and say, okay. "Oh well, hmm? okay, yeah, you took it. No big deal." Well, I maybe four, only give it to charge. people who spend X amount per month. You know, or, or oh, per yeah, year or something. Too. You know, you give it to your key customers and stuff like that. But yeah. But, but then yeah, again, you'll find idea. that a lot of the people doing the buy, you know, the buy-in for the company are the buyers, and they're the ones who don't want the thing. They're, you know, the engineers need, right. it, but they don't right. actually do the buy-in. But eh, I don't know. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, there was actually an article on uh, EBM this week about about that same kind of thing about uh, the difference between uh, they call it the art of concurrent engineering, and basically mm-hmm. just like that 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 separation of you know like buyers. They're not engineers, right? I mean, but, yeah, but no, anyone right. who 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 works in a in a big company knows that like buyers are are critical, right? I mean, like they just they're <laughs> first off, they're very angry people. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know about <laughs> yeah, your experience, but <laughs> yes, yes, I think it's pretty universal that that people that are in purchasing have to be angry because it's just part of the persona you know it's just like so, they just yell so if <laughs> if, just, if someone's going to go postal at a uh, at an engineering oh God, company it's going to be a buyer right yeah <laughs> yeah it's killer man it's just and and you know and i think I, I might have talked about that on here before but actually my best friend growing up he uh he ended up being a buyer too he's he's a purchasing right. agent 
And so I go home, I'm going home for the holidays, and, and me and him just getting these huge arguments about, <laughs> oh, the engineers are wrong. Oh, the purchasing were assholes, you know? <laughs> it's just like, it's just like this great, it's just great match yeah, of yeah. just yeah. <laughs> argument. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, oh. it's a lot of fun. <laughs> It's gold. But you know, it's it's important when you're when you are designing stuff in, you know, just to to think about, you know, if this thing makes it to maybe even ten thousand or a hundred thousand or a million units, that that's a really huge deal, right? I mean, like just the logistics yep. of all that stuff. It's a you know, this this article is talking about how distributors like DigiKey and, and LM fourteen and all those all those other guys, they're not I mean, some of they have the back end capabilities of doing it, but they don't mm. do it for everybody, right? So DigiKey yep. actually yeah, right. will yep. do super high volume stuff. But it's like it's like a whole other division and yes. that I I never knew about. And and you actually have to like set up accounts and all this other crap and basically it's it's just like it's it's like mm. it's effectively a whole other business. And yep. and, and they can do it, but it's 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 you know, like you look at the site, the thousand piece price on DigiKey, and it's way different mm-hmm. than the you know the hundred thousand piece price. Of it's course, just, yeah. I feel like there's an art Only form the big between go, going getting, going yeah. from the thousand piece price to to figuring out what yours is. You know, you get like the company discount, and then you get the uh-huh. the, the volume all sorts discount, of handshake oh. deals, and things done yeah. behind doors that yeah, right that you just exactly. don't know about. Mm. Speaking of the chip companies um every with everything's going end of life these days seems to be all the rage well it could be that's that's the real thing so it so could this be. is well, uh, it's, uh, well it could I've be got, so, well look ti you, you have discontinued the stellar the stellaris um cortex m chips They've just, oh. you know, secretly just uh, discontinued them in the background. Oh, by the way, these are end of life, you know. And, um, yeah, it just magically popped up oh. as a flag on their website. Yeah, they discontinued their ARM Cortex-M series. So tough titties if you just designed that in. <laughs> oh, man. I, did, I, did, I thought you were talking about the other article we posted. No, but no, no. This I, is crazy. Why I saw your one, and then I added this yeah. one in. Yeah. T.I. of it. Man. Somebody just, Yeah. Somebody oh found it boy. because there was a little We're flag. The end of, it's the end of the year, buddy. <laughs> Watch, <laughs> hold on to your hats. Here it comes. <laughs> and of course, oh, Ti man. bought the Stellaris stuff from Luminary Micro when they bought Luminary right. Micro, right? Because they wanted to get into ARM, and Luminary Micro were this little obscure outfit that did all these ARM, you know, these high-end ARM Cortex and other right. uh, processors. So how, they they how bought long ago Luminary. Was that now? Oh, that was, was that a couple like, of years, probably two years. Three or back. four years. Uh, three, I guess mate, it, it happened four. when we were still doing the show, so it must have been less than three. Right, yeah. 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 Anyway, it happened a couple of years ago, track. so now they've yeah, they've just discontinued them. Thank you very huh. much. The whole Cortex M series. Well, and, and we talked about there that is some last new week version with... of oh, okay. the, uh, the Cortex M or something. So they've totally Yeah, know, there's M four yeah. now and M zero plus yeah, is yeah. the big one, right? Yeah. And oh, there's just oh, so many tough. bloody variations of these um, processors like where does yeah. it stop? Like how many of these vendors? Not 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 just TI, but how many of the million vendors that manufacture ARM cores? How many of these families are going to go end of life in the next right. five or ten years? Right. And and here and here's the real question: is who do we blame? I mean, that's what it, that's what it ultimately comes down to. Is, is where does where does the buck stop? Does the buck stop with <laughs> TI? Does it stop with ARM? Do they not support it anymore? Does it start a stop? Well, no, I, I don't even know no, what's above that. No, you can't blame ARM. They're, they're still going to support it, I'm sure, because it's just a core, right? They they just yeah, sell maybe. the, you know, a core doesn't go out of date, right? I mean, right. A, I guess a core it is just, is, it just bits, know, bits in a, a file, core right? It's just a, you know, a, you know, a high definition logic file that <laughs> you just, buy. It's you know? just an NDA and about 500 grand or so, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 500? <laughs> yeah, probably more than that, right? That's chump Five change, million? yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, wow, keep talking. That's crazy. But, yeah, I know they've just discontinued it. Well, it's it's well, the vendors, it's right? not recommended Mate. for new designs. But yeah. that, but that's that's well. basically the death knell, right? That's mm. like okay, you get you get you get two or three or maybe five years, but eh, you better you better watch your back, buddy. That's like the <laughs> that's the uh, the hangman is calling your name, right? Mm. <laughs> so how do you pick one? How do you go about picking a processor from? 
You know, and as we've oh, talked oh, about it? before, <laughs> no, right, you, you know, this arm bullshit. Oh, if you choose arm as your process, and then you can just move to any vendor seamlessly. You know, everyone knows yeah. that's absolutely complete bullshit. Right? Yeah. And right. uh, it's like no, uh, you, you could know. throw out all. I mean, you could move. You can move a letter in a in a part family, and you're screwed, right? I yeah, mean, you, exactly. You can lose entire <laughs> peripheral sets, and you're uh-huh. just. Yep. Oh God. Yep. <laughs> oh, that. Not... Oh, you wanted that to work still? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's it's a tough. tough. I know it's a tough choice, and a lot of people are going to get caught out with this because how many arm variants are there? Like, I don't know. There's dozens or something, right? Well, let's see. In the market right now, like you hear about a lot of them, but I think you know A8 is is kind of waning. A9 is pretty huge right now. You got the M16s or not M? Sorry. A16s and up through A56 for like the server stuff. <laughs> I mean, there, there's a shitload, and then there's the low stuff like the M, the Cortex stuff, like the M3, yeah, yep. M4, M0 plus, and that's all you really see. That's all I've really seen, at least. I mean, maybe there's others, but but that's all oh, about the core well, stuff. Well, there's Cortex R, there's Cortex A, there's really uh, oh, oh yeah. Is it Cortex A? I thought it was just A. Oh, I can't well, I can't keep up with yeah, it because honestly, I think it's Cortex A. I I avoid it. I mean, that's what it is. I mean, like. Because it's it's I think I think one of the, the the problems is is it's it's a space race right I mean it's a oh well we have the newest hot model right Yep exactly Here's all the new features you get you go from eighty D MIPS to ninety D MIPS Oh cool whatever that means uh, <laughs> And I mean like that's what it is right And then and then the vendors throw in their you know their process efficiencies and their and their peripherals and everything Wilson else and all that cost. sort of jazz Yep. Yeah. Right, and, and it's it's become uh, formulaic, but man. but so is the obsolescence, and it. I don't know. I think I think what you're going to see is that you're going to get people chasing like automotive market. Right, uh, automotive is also, often is often you know touted as high lifetime mm-hmm. because the car yes. companies mandate it, and yes, so you'll see right. people chasing that, and you'll pay more for it. But what's the cost of a rework? Right, I mean, like oh, it, I it's would a rather big... pay more for it and use it deliberately, not as super bleeding edge processor if it means you know it's going to be available right. in 10 years time i mean yeah i mean that's oh, that's a big deal for man. a lot of customers i mean yeah i think i think the thing is like you know like a lot of what we hear about is consumer stuff right because the tablet space is moving so fast exactly you just get cell phone space is moving so fast and that's what that's what's hot right i mean it's it's, it's interesting to talk about and it really is i mean it's cool right i mean like the and commodity those... level hardware is really cool but, but those companies just, that do so that, fast. those consumer companies who make these iPads and bloody tablets and everything else, they don't care if that chip is out of, you know, right. goes out of three, production three years in, max. In, in, in well, 12 months, right? They do, you know, yeah. they, they manufacture well, that max. model for 12 months, 18 months, right? And right. then yeah. they're bang, no, they're, they're, they're on to the next model. They don't care. They've, they've got to retool right. the damn thing anyway. So. Right. Yeah, but I've always wondered I mean, what that was like at like working. Like I've never, I've never talked to anyone who works in like a, uh, you know, like a motherboard. Right. Fa- yeah, I, yeah. I, you know, like motherboards are a very fast turn. You know, like, hmm. like I, I know that a lot of it is like back end work that you don't see, and then you know you have like six month lifespan for a for a motherboard at a manufacturer, right? You'll you know you'll hmm. see it, it's manufactured for six months, and then they'll do a turn, and and it's and it's there's big revisions and stuff. But it's so much churn there. You know, it's just like it's just like yeah, they, they change. Know. So many things out of necessity that I, I, yep. I'd really love to know about the culture there and just, like, what the hell that's like. I mean, it's got to be insane. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's most likely, you know, oh, what chip can we get this week? You know, that's what we're going to yeah. des- design our, our next run for, yeah. you know, and then that's it. And then it just changes about uh, hmm. over what parts they can get at what yeah. price, probably. Oh, that's true, too, know. right? I mean, yeah, you got to play it against the... The market and you're chasing you know other trends right like like i remember or, i remember bunny wrote that post use about the latest because that sells right that's oh, true yeah, too th- right this has the new arm um, cortex m bloody z million you know right in it. And, <laughs> right, well, right. Uh, the top line spec uh yeah. chasing chasing the marketing dollars and stuff <sighs> well i remember i remember bunny wrote about that with with the uh the iphone he said he was he was he bought the schematics in order to yeah that's right you know in order to chase the high volume mm. components because you know there's going to be tons of crosses and yeah but and, that's you know, flawed be... right that's fundamentally flawed you won't be able to get those parts in three years well you might not be able to get those parts today because yeah exactly because, Apple's because buying the them all. run's already gone <laughs> that, that's right 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 yeah yeah it, it, that that is the downside of it but I so mean, it sounds I, like I think a the smart strategy idea. but 
Yeah, yeah, I think the general it, idea is good. I mean, I mean, you and I design like that too, right? I mean, you design for what's available, right? You, I'm sure that you look at DigiKey yep. just like I yep. look at DigiKey yeah, and yeah, say, yeah, that's right. okay, well, there's 300,000 parts available. I'm probably safe for the next mm. couple of weeks at least. Yep. I mean, because you don't want to get stuck. No one wants to get stuck. I mean, granted, I was just looking at capacitors that was 300,000 parts, <laughs> right? It's not going to be like, you know, super specialized FPGA that's at 300,000 because they're right. not idiots but um you know it's it, you still design for that because it's just a, it's just a risk it's a balancing of risk i mean that's mm. what it all comes down to it's it's yeah it's crappy i hate it <laughs> so what did you have on here about free scale and um nxp focus oh, so, in 2013 so, so basically there was the, there was an announcement from the freescale ceo saying okay well in 2013 we're going to focus and then there were similar statements that came out of st who's in in some restructuring talks of debt and same with nxp and basically all the all these huge companies are you know they're 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 mm. up to their necks in debt right i mean free yeah, scale yeah. because they got taken private and then they went oh, public that, again that was and they didn't get as much muscle. money yeah yeah shimazel right <laughs> uh <laughs> And basically, all these companies have tons of debt. And so what they're doing is they're saying, all right, well, we're going to focus in quote marks, right? And what that really mm-hmm. means is they're, they're, they're going to try and, you know, f- target their, their main markets and ignore everybody else or, or send a bunch of stuff end of life and because they have to, right? I mean, they can't support it. They can't no, no, manufacture right. yeah. it. And so basically, it, it's just it's – it's a warning sign for people out there. I mean, I, I've, I've used some of these parts before, and I'm, I'm a little scared about it. I mean, like – you know, you you hope hmm? it basically it's like a lottery. You know, it's like you're hoping yeah, that's that right. you know, please don't pick me, please don't pick me, <laughs> but they might. And so it's just it's just something to keep an eye out for. I think we're going to see a lot of that in 2013, at least from you know what we're hearing. You know, mm-hmm. we we can only believe what we hear. Well, so. they, these companies have to go lean, you know, because they're they're in huge debt. There's nothing else you can do. It's right. either go yeah, it's, go lean and strip everything, or go out of business. Right. Exactly. Unless exactly. you're Renesis. Renesis, right. Renesis. And you get bailed out. Well, and not just Renesis, actually. So ST is, you know, real big in, in mm-hmm. France and Germany as well. And as well, oh, I course. think they're in like the yeah. Alsace-Lorraine uh, uh, region. And and basically, it's the same thing there, too. It, it's like mm-hmm. these, you know, these huge companies. I mean, they're they're employing thousands and thousands of people. And basically, they're becoming bailouts. I mean, they're... they're, because uh, they're I know, too big I know. To, they're deemed to be too big to fail. Right, right, because it's just all the trickle hmm. effects of you know if yep. if the fab goes out of business, then you lose you know thousands of jobs at a time, and then all hmm. the supporting businesses that you know support the the fab and all and the you can't people manufacture that sell those food cars to them. anymore. Because right, exactly, if you, you know, exactly. That's a, yeah, it's I mean, an if one of those argument, chips really. is used in a car, they can't just respin that you know that uh, that little that box oh. in the car that uses that chip. Right? I thought you meant the people that are selling cars to the to the workers at the plant, but you're you're saying no, the no, actual, no. I'm talking the about the actual side. manufacturers. Yeah. That's why the people who are bailing out, mm. uh, who are bailing them out, are Nissan and Toyota. Oh, interesting. Yeah, if you read the article. <laughs> whoa, whoa, you, buddy! You posted it on here. <laughs> you read the article. I, I, I read it. I've got, I've got yeah. some 2013 resolutions that'll take care of that. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're the ones bailing them out, or they're yeah. part of the consortium that are bailing them out because they need those chips. Right, because it right. takes well, them a huge life. Yeah, because you know if they can't get those chips anymore for the for the million black boxes that are used in on in cars these days, then they're screwed. Because right. you can't just respin those you know those things in a couple of weeks. Right, and to it's not use I mean, some other and, vendor's chip. And the reality with all this stuff too is that it's not just hardware anymore, right? Maybe maybe in the past, you know, a seven four series logic chip goes out, right? Okay, yeah, you could probably find a, a replacement, even if you can't, and you have to change the actual structure. Then okay, yeah, the, the logic changes, right, and, and, and that's fine. But mm. you know, now there's so much software built on top of it, right? There's firmware, and then the software built on top of that, and it just yeah. propagates through the system. It's just oh, it's killer. I mean, just these engineering changes are just mm. they are very significant impacts. An interesting article I saw today was actually about not just the so so like you, you're talking about like these car makers bailing them out. Also, though, uh, distributors investing in chip companies. I forget which oh, one it really? was, but they were, they were saying that yeah, it was like a distributor that that had bought. I think it was Future had bought into someone else. I mean, it's just like this this system that's all built upon itself because it has to be right. I mean, like <laughs> there's all this this conjoined interest. Yeah, yeah on of course. Selling, selling more stuff to more people, and yeah, man, it's a 
Ooh, that's a house of cards. It's <laughs> just <laughs> I always gotta you say ho- yes. <laughs> you hope it doesn't don't, happen, but it mean if don't it does, take it's, out it's the wrong card and then it all collapses. Yeah, right. Exactly. I mean, it's nasty. Just, it's, I mean, so it, it's uh, there's a lot of big companies out there, and uh, so guys that are listening that are big companies, uh, don't don't mess up. <laughs> <laughs> I need oh, I need boy. chips to make stuff. <laughs> yeah. Speaking about making stuff, Bunny is um. We talked about before, and this oh, ties yeah. right into it. He's um, doing an open source hardware laptop. Well, laptop yeah. in quote marks because I don't think it's actually going to be a laptop. Um, I think that's just a marketing term that he's using. Um, I, I I suspect it's going that? to be more. Well, I, because a laptop implies a sexy, fully built machine with a screen that hinges up and does everything. Although oh, he's yeah. talking about doing that no, sort of stuff. About but he's talking about Yeah, uh, he's talking about but I think custom, he'll... Custom, uh, custom plastics and metals custom and stuff. plastics and... and all that sort of stuff. But I think you know, what might happen here is he'll find that there's more interest in just having it as a bare board. Like just having it as a, like oh, a Raspberry Pi type embedded board, possibly. I think this would be and, pretty uh, expensive. I think, for... that, I think people yeah. would want that more than they would want the laptop and all the plastics. Because they, oh, they have their that, own be thing in, in mind. Yeah, I think that's what he'll find. Is that, yeah, he well, might go through and do the plastics and get the whole laptop and everything, but I think he'll find that people go, oh, I don't want that. I just want the board. Right. Well, and, and mm. it's interesting you bring up Raspberry Pi because that that was actually the thing that I was, I was most impressed with this. He actually put in uh, a bunch of different headers in order to... Um, <laughs> Make it compatible Make it with Raspberry, Raspberry Pi, Pi and yeah. then tons of FPGA. He put an FPGA on a laptop, which by itself makes it just awesome, right? <laughs> and expensive, <laughs> right. but but awesome, yeah, yeah. right? I mean, you put a Spartan Six on there, um, three hundred twenty-four pins. I mean, like so, basically, tons of breakout pins. This thing is just set up for hacking hardware, which is great. And I mean, it's hard the, the, hacked that's hardware the goal of to the make, thing. yeah, to hack hardware. It's it's which awesome. is all the more reason why you wouldn't use it in its laptop form factor. Yeah, that's true. And I guess because I mean, that's what silly. happened with the if Chumpy laptop, eventually, too. you buy a laptop, because this thing will be four or five times more expensive than a regular laptop, right? Right, 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 right. right. It just won't get yeah. down, to, down to a laptop price point. So if you want a laptop, you buy a laptop. Right, but so you could see the synthesis yeah. open source hardware. You could see something like this going towards like like the Ninja Blocks that use the Beagle Bone as the base, and then they built on mm-hmm. top of it. You could see the same kind of thing happening here, where right. it's as a proto quasi first run kind of thing, and then eventually you do custom cost optimized hardware, and then you you know you roll yep. it from there kind of thing, which mm. is great. I mean that's that's exactly what you need, right? You could see that. I mean this is a, like you said, it's a single board computer. It doesn't have yep. any of the charging capacities on board, but you know all the control, all of the processing. Yeah, it's you know it'll run mm. Linux. It'll run yep. probably a virtual box that can run Windows if you needed it. Maybe a little slower, but I mean it's mm. it's awesome. I mean yeah, it's great. We should have this guy in the show sometime. He's really smart. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, oh, yeah. 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 I'm sure we haven't yeah. had him on before. <laughs> no, no, no. But None you know, more. reading reading this uh, document he wrote up, it was it was really interesting reading some of the the design decisions he had. You know, oh, so he, has he put all that? I haven't read that. Oh well, I mean, he was just talking about you know, like one of the big things was making sure it was open from a from a software perspective, right? So he right. he understood that the Wi Fi stack and the oh, what was the other thing? I think yeah. the GPU you and know, those, the USB those are closed stacks, black those box can get, kind of things, yep. right? Right. Yep. So, but but then he said you don't need this to boot. So okay, yeah, okay. That you can do it without it. So it is technically still open. That's why he open. didn't include Wi Fi on there, right? Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, what else was there? I mean, there was just interesting. You know, like the an- I really like the analog. Um, <laughs> I was surprised. Uh, <laughs> the analog output for gauge stuff, right? So just from a yeah, from a yeah, UI yeah. perspective of being yeah. able to integrate a little analog gauge for battery power or, or time remaining left or anything like that. I mean, it's just those are just nice little flares that you can you can use on stuff. Um, what was the other one though? There was one other one, big one. I can't remember what it was. There was one hmm. other trade off that I I really liked, but uh, you know it, it was interesting from a. You know, like what what he chose as a processor too. You know, he, he chose a IMX six six, which Bunny's used a lot of Freescale stuff. I know he used it on the Chumbi and stuff, but mm-hmm. it is quad core still. So it's, you know, it's it's great. I mean, I I really think this is going to be a really cool project. And I think he, I think what he's going to yeah. find, and maybe some of our audience is interested in this kind of thing, is people are going to jump in and say, yeah, not only do I want to buy a board off you because he talks about starting a Kickstarter with it, they're going to yep. you know actually help develop you know the low level drivers and stuff like that that that's really going to be necessary to get it all working together. 
Mm-hmm. And and when you when you build that community kind of thing, I mean that's that's what makes for a great project. I mean that's gonna make for you know maybe Gen One isn't usable as a, just a laptop, but maybe Gen Two is, and maybe then cost reduced happens, right? I mean that that's the kind of thing that really makes for for good products. Open I products. think it's gonna be a winner. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, but in markets so, he probably has not realized. Oh yeah, well you don't need it. Yeah. If you try no. and constrain yourself, you're you're screwed, right? But yep. Yep. Oh, that was what it was. It was the connector stuff. So he he pulled off a bunch of uh, battery connectors from old hard drives, right? So it was a bunch of old Molex uh, connectors that can yeah, right. hook up from from old disk drives. Then he said, "Okay, I could find these cheap." Um, and then so he threw those down as as hooking up to battery stuff. He chose standard lipos from um, from like the DIY drone folks and a lot yep. of people that have battery yep. packs at their house. That's a great decision too. Uh, he pulled a SATA connector, I think it was. Yeah, so he uh, put a mm-hmm. SATA connector to actually talk up to the main board from this this battery board. And the thing is, I mean, like I've I've always talked about this from a system design. The nice thing about it is, if you define your interface, then you can just let it go, right? I mean, if yes. if you define yeah, yeah. that interface once, then it doesn't matter what happens after that because you'll you're nah, going to find right. variations no matter what. But if it's a standard interface, then people just design whatever they want to after that. I mean, hopefully you still have a, a little bit of guiding principles forward, right? So you can actually get a battery pack you want to and control and everything. But that's that's really when it gets crazy awesome. You know, like like Raspberry Pi having their 26-pin header and Arduino having their pin out. You know, like that that's, that's standardization it is what, you know, you yes. set that and then you just let it go. That's, that's, that's the best it. part of it. So very exciting. Yeah, Bunny maybe we get him back on to still talk awesome. about. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he's going to be very busy. But uh, yeah, I I think so. Yeah, it's a lot of work. It's not a uh, yeah. trivial project, that's for sure. Right. Um, that's cool. And, you more, know, more work in the software side of things than there are in the hardware side of things. Like people l- right. look at that and go, "Oh, how can he develop his own laptop?" Well, it's not that hard. You know, like as in like just the board, right? Yeah, you can spend a month doing the schematics and then you lay out the board, and you know it's. It's not that hard. There's a right. lot of work they're, to come in the software side of things. That's true. I mean, yeah, it's it's mm. non trivial. I mean, like the the layout is, you know, BGA packages and everything like that, but yep. it is it is easy to overcome. But if he was trying to yeah. do the, the operating system and everything by himself, then that that would be where it really starts to, you mm-hmm. know, hit a wall. Yep. Um, so yeah, that's if people are interested, you know, give him a shout. I think I think he has some links on here for getting in contact and helping out with some of the validation testing. But uh right. yeah. It's, I'm sure there'll be cool. no shortage of people willing to help out. Yeah, it's great. I mean, I was thinking about that today, you know, just with hardware in general. I was holding a board I was working on today, and I was just like, man, it feels good to make stuff, you know? <laughs> I just like it. And I think, it's, I think it's universal, too. Like, even software people, you know, it's just – it's so hard when you're just, you know – at least, at least my past experience with software, which is limited, you know, it's just hard because it's so abstracted. It's like, well, what is this really doing? You know, even if you have like a, you know, UI and everything, but man, when you hold hardware, it's just, it's great. <laughs> I like it. Uh, I'm sold. <laughs> Speaking about hardware. making your own hardware, um, we've, there's um, a 4K desktop pick and place machine, oh, Chinese yeah. pick and place machine. I've seen this the video. Was... It looks very quick. Oh, this was posted by Zach Hoken, who was on the show p- previously, mm. and uh, it is on his favorite site, which is Taobao, which I haven't yeah. tried out yet. But oh, it's, yeah, I've never really used it. No, it's it's a, a dangerous looking site. I mean, like, there's so <laughs> many weird and crazy things. I, yeah, I think yeah. he called it the eBay of China or something. Yep. Yeah. Something yeah. Like that. Yeah. People have got to watch this. I mean, it is it's very very impressive for what it is. I mean, so it's mm. four grand. Is it 4K? American I don't know. I dollars? think it's 3,600 American if you actually do the conversion. Okay. So, so, okay. so it's under 4K, but including pay. I'm sure it's not cheap to post a sucker. So Right, 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 right. Um, but yeah, it's probably, it looks like it's it about actually, two, two by two foot. I mean, or whatever that be. Yeah, like. it's, it's quite a large desktop machine. It, it looks like it holds like 30 reels or something. I, you know? Yeah. I'm not, uh, and yeah, and I don't know the, if that price includes the feeders either. Right. I'm not sure right. if, you know, yeah. Um, well, the crazy thing is, like, you compare this to, like, you know, like, like home. We, we've featured some machines on here before, and they're really cool because, you know, you get to actually see how they're made, and a lot of them are, like, you know, like laser cut wood and stuff like that. But, man, this thing is just spiffy. Yep. It's just, like, it's just zipped around the board like crazy. And I think it, it looks it, it like probably it's, there's matches some fine engineering pro. in it. And it looks, yeah, I mean, it, like, and it looks absolutely bare bones, just what you would need 
to do the job and that's it you right. know like is there's no under- big huge housing for it there's the x y you know uh, yeah Right, so it's, it's like all a gantry, neat and tidy. Right? There's the yeah, and there's the uh, tracks to hold the you know, and the cables in, and there's the step motors, and, and yeah, it just does. It seems to do exactly the job you'd expect out of a desktop pick and place machine. Right, and the video is of oh four oh two placement too, so it's not like it's not mm. like some crazy you know like, oh well, it does twelve oh six is and nothing else. So yeah. <laughs> it's uh, although the videos only show it placing, you know, a very limited range of components. Um so you know you know, how does it handle like over distance you know, larger, you mean? Yeah, over over distance yeah. and stuff like that. And right, right, right. Because yeah, you, you know, can have you can have local local accuracy versus like board board wide accuracy stuff, right? And board wise speed and how fast can it move the heavy components because right. it has to slow down. You know, if you pick up a big heavy component, you can't just fly it across the board <laughs> right. at the same speed as you can for a little O four O two because it like it falls off there's not enough suction there right. to you know right. to hold the component in place so right you know and what's the software like i mean you know is it is it usable and uh, i i love how in the video they put an iphone under the board and you can see right. the screen about that. with a timer because they've because that was because sh- otherwise people would so say oh they've sped the video up right well so so, probably... so that's their way of showing that they actually put an iphone Pod under there, where, well, iPhone under there, under the board, and see the screen, and they've got a stopwatch going on the screen so that you can mm-hmm. see that it is actually real time. And yes, that's how fast it is. Okay, I wanted to make sure. I so, thought it might have been part of the product or something too. I, and I was like, I, I, my my first thought is went, huh? They've integrated an iPhone yeah, in the base expensive. of it. I went, no, that's like, not an iPhone. That's like a ripped off Samsung. <laughs> well, <laughs> phone, whatever, but, you yeah. know. And like, yeah, but yeah. I thought, what is that? Some sort of control interface or something? And then I realized, no, it was they're doing it just for the stopwatch. Just just to show right. you that okay. they didn't they didn't fake the video and speed it up, so right. be, be, because it is that quick. But the first time you see it, you go, oh, you know, it's fake. It can't be that quick. But yeah, yeah. it is. I don't know. Would you would you ever get quick. something like this? I mean, do you. I mean, I uh, know because I've talked about it before. It's there's, uh, you know. Uh, no, I'd rather pay some schmuck who who knows how to do it properly. <laughs> Sorry to all, all schmucks right? out there. The schmucks out there. No, you yeah. pay someone who's, you know, because these things, they aren't magic, right? They require a lot of maintenance, a lot of care. You can't just set it up, push the button, come back, and there's your thousand boards. You've got to sit there babysitting this sucker, right? Yeah. Which and, is interesting the, because uh, the Chinese <laughs> translation for some of these buttons say, share. <laughs> there's like a share button, and it says, share this baby. Favorite oh, really? this baby <laughs> is like the product. It's like nice. Okay, uh, <laughs> thank you, Google. <laughs> oh, brilliant. But yeah, it's um. It, so it'd it, be good it for like a hackerspace so or something was, like that. Yeah, if I was in the market for one, yes, I would seriously consider this. But no, I wouldn't want I one to that, do I don't my know own how much, I, don't, I don't know how much like the standard pick and places are. Are they like twenty grand, fifty grand? Uh, I don't even know. Where, like you can probably get a bare bones one for 10 but by the time you include all the feeders and all the support stuff yeah you're going to be paying right, 20 right. upwards well you know the the ones like Artifruit and spark fund the ones you see there yeah, they're about like, 50k yeah, like Chris has too like at uh, yeah the, they're, the they're, they're spending factory. about 50k so okay. really yeah you, you can get one for maybe 10 or 20 brand new we're talking um yeah but but it requires it's a full-time job to maintain yeah. and run these things so if you're a one-man band having your own Pick and place machine is actually pointless. It defeats the purpose of having well, unless automation. Unless you're cranking out a like lot, right? If, you, if you're cranking out a lot of volume, no. But you you still got to sit there all day and babysit this thing, right? And if you're a one man band, you this can't do anything zippy, else. This thing's pretty zippy, Dave. I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah, no. Trust me. Yeah, yeah, I can stay on Twitter on all day and just, and just uh, you no, know like, watch yeah. this thing here, clicking yeah, away. But they no, they are not infallible. They. Fail even the professional ones. If you've seen my video, right? I talk yeah, about on yeah. my video of watching my boards. You know, there's somebody who sits there, and they every five minutes they've got to fix something, they've got to change something, they've got to tweak something, they've got right, to, right? You know, it's uh, process control, right? I mean, that's that's yeah. the basis of it. It's yeah, a, yeah. So, oh, man. no, sorry. If you're a one man band and think this thing's gonna uh, pick and place machine's gonna help you, you're, I think you're in for a rude shock of how much time and efforts required to maintain them. Yeah, and run kind them. of. It, you know, so I've been looking at the CNC machine thing, right? And it's kind of the same yeah. thing of like this. This is like the low end, you know, low volume yep. kind of stuff. But yeah, to really get anything sizable, right? You need to go ten, mm-hmm. twenty, fifty grand because it's just it. It starts to become yeah, the yeah, material cost of it, right? I mean, like a mm. a 
you know, like you can get used mm. stuff, like old bridge ports, but to get all the the stepper motors and like the controllers and yep. stuff, it's just it's just a lot of it's a lot of money. And and like you yes. and like you said, I mean, there is a lot of maintenance there. So mm. I'm probably got myself <sighs> lined up for a hell of a new year. <laughs> <laughs> Have fun. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, yeah, no, no. I mean, these things are getting cheaper. I mean, it does look like it can do the business. I mean, I will reserve judgment because it, you know, it might be as a completely unreliable POS. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, one one but... one run is different than <laughs> twenty runs. Is different than it's, a thousand yeah, runs. It's, exactly. Right. So repeatability you know, and, is important. And, and how good is the software? And you know, and right, yeah, all that sort of stuff. I keep finding that with uh, with all this stuff, you know, it, it it's interesting how much mechanical stuff. Like once you get into the manufacturing side of electronics, it's amazing how much you're like, oh, this isn't electronics anymore. This is this is no, mechanical it's manufacturing. stuff, right? Yeah, this is yeah. mechanical. It's manufacturing. It's a totally different ball game. That's, That's why weird. you're a mug if you try and do it yourself. Well, I agree with that, but I'm just saying, like, you'd think someone would have told you in school. It's like, okay, well, if you're gonna make <laughs> stuff, just you know, you might want to take some mechanical classes or brush up on right your, you know statics or whatever else yeah. <laughs> you know like programming it's, it's you know it's just like it, it feels like electronics isn't just electronics anymore you know and maybe it's just well, because it, of what it, i look it at it never has been it that's never has also been possible un- unless, as well unless you're talking like we talked with our guests oh, that's true, last like week said, about right? just making a bare board right if it's right. just a bare and then it's just the load on the bare board and then that's so easy Right, because you've got no enclosures, you've got, you know, like a testing might be easy or whatever, you know. But no, if you get into any moderately complex product, the manufacturing of it is a whole different world of mechanical and optimization and manufacturing processes. Right. Well, yeah, there's the, engineering. The electronics the itself engineers doesn't matter. For a reason. Yeah, right. exactly. The, the electronics itself is 5% of it, you know. It's like a, a trivial part of your product. Which is crazy. That's you know, we should change no, that's, that. That's just should, the way it is. Someone should fix that. Get on that, people. <laughs> right. I'm sorry, yeah. but products have to have a physical manifestation. <laughs> Who would have thought? Yeah. I know you hardware. Know? Hardware is hard, <laughs> yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's why uh, you know Bunny's laptop in quote marks. Um, you know, I, you know, I people have different requirements and different needs for that sort of thing. So that's why I don't think. Few people are going to buy it as a laptop. I don't see that's where its success is going to be. Its success will be as a bare board, which then gets integrated into all different types of form factors. Yeah, yeah that'll be interesting. Mm. Speaking of the uh, troubles of of manufacturing, actually, uh, someone posted on on the subreddit about uh, the kick. It was a Kickstarter project. No, not it again. was. What have we talked about this? Oh, I don't know. This is every week we talk. Hey, oh, let's, oh, Kickstarter this project. Kickstarter, you know. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because they, they talked about the kick. And, and so it's basically, it's like a lighting, it's like an LED. Um, wow, major. another Kickstarter LED lighting project. <laughs> it's like Wi-Fi sorry, control. It's so, dime a dozen, yeah. It's interesting, I think. and <laughs> but <laughs> So they were talking about, the person who posted it said, oh, they're bringing it, you know, they're bringing manufacturing back. And I thought it was interesting because... <laughs> The person who who interestingly told them to follow the MBA playbook was uh, me. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, so you're you're involved in this project? I'm not involved huh? in it, but they they emailed oh. me about it, and I said, yeah, you know, like why don't you talk to some people? And I pointed them towards some former guests who were very helpful for us, and and uh, yeah, and now it's they're actually bringing it back from China. I thought it was interesting. Oh, just right. oh right, okay. So they're bringing and, it back from China. Under right. your advice, right? The, okay. ir- the irony of me, uh, <laughs> right? You know, lamenting the NBA playbook, but hey, yep, I yep. said it before all this GE crap started happening, so you know, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's just oh it's boy, silly. <laughs> so, what's the takeaway from this? They're bringing it. What they tried to manufacture in China and they failed, or they had issues. It was just yeah, find, bringing... finding reliable, uh, you know, suppliers, right? So, I mean, like so, like Scott Miller's business, right? Was was Find, was basically providing reliable suppliers, and if you don't go with someone like that, you're on your own, right? I mean, that's basically mm. the idea of it. And and there's costs associated with going with someone like Dragon Innovation or other companies like that. And so, right. you know, if you go on your own, you might get screwed. You know, you might say, "Well, I need 
ten thousand boards, and they say, "Well, too bad, go away." <laughs> and it's like, okay, well, and, and and the benefit of being local, wherever you are, it's not just the states; oh, it's, it's local. Huge. Yeah, yeah, right. It's it's that's that's the basis of it is try and stay local. I saw there was another there was actually a subreddit about it today, or there was a, a Reddit thread about it today about just getting boards manufactured, right? And everyone mm. there was saying the same thing: go local, no matter what. Yeah. If you can hop on a plane without a ma- without a passport. You were in better shape than needing to ha- have a passport. Not from the yes. passport side, but just from the distance side, right? If you yep. have to fly 15 hours, that's different than flying three hours. And so, uh, yeah, that's. I mean, that's the takeaway: is just stay local if you can. If any, totally if you agree. can justify the cost in any way possible. Oh yeah, what, what kind of stuff? You mean you're? Uh... Well, I'm, I'm getting my boards made in Sydney. Oh yeah, cool. A lot of what's the cost there looking like? Ah, oh, yeah, the cost there is well twenty twenty percent. I mean, like. That's what uh, I expected. Hang on, oh, I don't know in percentage. Let me run the numbers. Um, it's yeah, around about that, maybe. I mean, that's I mean that's no, what I actually, expect, right? Yeah, but... yeah, yeah, probably. It's you know, it's it's quite a significant proportion of the cost of the bomb. You know, right? Um, right. Yeah, yeah, it's quite large. It's you know, in the order of like thirty percent or something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, it what it comes down to to me, I mean, and I, maybe maybe we mentioned it here before, but you know, if you get woken up at three in the morning, it all comes down to what would I pay right now to not be awake? Yeah, yeah. Is it thirty percent? Is it a hundred percent? Exactly. I think it's at least thirty percent. You know, like that's that's what I get. Yeah, too, I mean, so. I could get my product manufactured in China, right? And uh, yeah, I could probably halve my total cost of the product, including the components and the uh, and the manufacture and the bareboard. Man- like I get my bareboard manufactured by Circuit Labs in in New Zealand. As well, mm-hmm. and I pay a, a very substantial um, cost extra for that instead of getting the bare board made in China. Um, yeah, and so yeah, I could I could probably halve or one third my total cost of the product, but I don't want to do that. It, you know, I'll just happily get it manufactured locally, get less hassle, yep. and charge more for it. Yeah, you know. Do you I put mean, uh, mm, so where it's manufactured on your parts on your products? Um, I'm always I'm not curious about that. Not on the product itself, but on the uh, page. Yeah, I yeah, actually okay. say, yeah, it's manufactured locally. The board comes from New Zealand, and you know, all that sort of jazz. Yeah, that's and always all the that's always an internal struggle and, for know. me. Is is like the, you know, my inner cheapskate versus my you know, inner yeah. Yeah. knowledge of quality. Right. I mean, like it's not necessarily <laughs> just quality, but it's also you know, yeah, mm-hmm. crappy nationalism, whatever else you want to call it, right? I mean, like, it's, some of it's just other stuff, right? I mean, well, so or support, supporting local guys and supporting the yeah. ecosystem and everything, right? So Yeah, I like supporting the local guys. I'm deliberately paying a lot more to do it. But it right. also, as you said, it also, if something goes wrong, I can, I you know, a half-hour drive away, mm-hmm. right? If something goes wrong in China, forget it, right? That that whole yeah. run is ruined. I'm, I'm not flying to China. I'll just have to say, oh, okay, right off that batch, <laughs> Right, you know, right. shit happens, right? And right. I've I've got to wear that cost if yep. something goes wrong. Yeah, at least it was so, at least it was half you know, as much because I'm eating it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, that's you know, and so yeah, I mean, uh, granted, there hasn't been too many problems, um, you know, uh, so far that um, you know, had that has been an advantage being local. But if it does happen, then there is that advantage there. Yeah, so. it's it's tough, right? Because humans are really bad at that kind of thing. I mean, we're we're bad at figuring out what the future pain will be, right? I mean, in, mm-hmm. in general, I think humans are risk averse, but not not in, when it comes to like that kind of stuff. Not with like straight up cost stuff, like money mm-hmm. stuff. Because you know, I've I've been a cheapskate before, and then when something breaks, I'm like, ah, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. charge to the store, buy something different, or whatever. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, and, and some people, some people have internalized that. I'm not, not, and you know, I'm. This is my own personal struggle, but mm-hmm. you know, you don't know what it is until you're there. And and yep. and the difference between a flight to China and a flight to you know Melbourne for you, oh, it's, it's huge. like, yeah, it's crazy. So I've I've got a friend who used to manufacture stuff locally um, at the mm-hmm. same place I do, and um, and uh, for various reasons of his customer, his customers basically forced him to move that to China. And, um, you know, he wasn't keen on that because he was happy where he was. But, uh, yeah, for various mm-hmm. reasons. Anyway, he moved to China and he's constantly flying back and forth and they're putting yeah. in dodgy components and all the usual stories you hear about. Yeah. You know, you've oh, got to yeah. watch them like a hawk. Otherwise, they'll substitute components 
in, you know, and all that sort of jazz. And, right. And, yeah, that one always gets they've me. had quite a few issues. So, yeah. you know, yeah, and it's constantly Nothing like looking down but, at a board yes, that you designed have... and you're yeah. like, oh, that's, uh, that's not me. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, 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 yes, he suddenly, you know, his costs, you know, to manufacture the product went down by two-thirds, right? He yep. can manufacture it for a third of the cost of what he could here, but with all those added issues so right all the hidden costs of his time yeah, and his yeah. stress his, his time else. away from the family because oh, he's got to fly back to china again you yep. know to to sort out problems and do stuff like that so yeah i don't know anyway each to their own S- yeah some people right. you know don't don't care and, uh, you know bottom some people line don't have a is everything well <laughs> right? yeah exactly well in some markets yeah bottom line is everything right, right? so but others yeah if you can get away with it yes do local certainly yep. And a lot of the time with these Kickstarter projects, it is kind of a niche kind of thing. And people are willing to pay a premium for this particular niche thing. So, you know, it's not like you're competing, you know, you know, you have to compete against some mass market manufactured product, right? You've got a niche product. You're you're the only one selling that product that does that thing. People can't buy it from somewhere else. So they're going to pay whatever it costs to get that manufactured. Right. And I think you should build that. If you're doing your Kickstarter or whatever, you should price everything locally. I think we've probably talked about this before as well. To, you know, uh, make your bomb, base your bomb on, you yeah, know, worst catalog case. prices, right? Your worst case, yeah. catalog, digi-key prices or Farnells yep. or whatever. Yep. And then, well, if you can source them cheaper somewhere else, great, go and do it. But yeah, do not, do not sure. start on eBay, right? <laughs> no, that's right. Yeah. So oh, base well, if everything. If I buy lots of 1,000 or yep. to, uh, 100,000, then I can get them for three cents a piece and they'll all exactly. be different colors. But <laughs> So if your bomb costs, you know, if your bomb cost is 30 bucks for your product, then based on DigiKey and local manufacture and local board prices and all that sort of stuff, then you then your target price is 100 bucks or something, right? right. So then... Yeah. then yeah, and anything over and above that is a bonus. If you can take your manufacturing to China after that, well, you've made a larger margin, but at a cost in right. terms of risk. Yeah, engineering and dollars. And, and, yeah, and yep, all that yep, sort of yep. jazz. So, yeah, whereas if you paint yourself, whereas you've got options that way. Whereas if you paint yourself into the corner first where, oh, I have to get it manufactured at the absolute lowest possible price in China, you're stuck with that. So Yeah, right. And you should design Where? for that then too, right? That's the other thing. Yes. Uh, yeah, you better start from the beginning. Oh boy! <laughs> and you never—I anyway. mean, you never learn this stuff in school, right? I mean, it's just—it's no, just, it's just something not. that you know. Yeah, it's yeah. if 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 students are listening, this is just not something that you can learn in school. Maybe you won't even learn it for the first couple of years in the job. It's just because you know, until you're manufacturing in the thick of it, it's just. Or, or until you get bit by mm-hmm. it, right? You're forced to do it. And uh, you get bit uh, by you it. usually have to get bit by it because you know you can hear you know. Idiots like us dull out all this advice, right? And um, oh, I'm sure I'm still going to get bit by it. Don't I can listen to myself <laughs> exactly. again in like probably exactly. two or three years and be like, why didn't yeah. I listen to myself? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Happens to me all the time. I never yeah. take my own advice. Right. Yep. It's pretty easy to do. <laughs> but speaking of school, um, did you see this story about Florida? There's a there's universities in Florida. Um, I'm, no, I'm very, I don't keep up with uh, U.S. Uh, U.S. stuff. Southern right. state news. Sorry. Right. Yeah, you're probably in <laughs> in good shape not doing that. But yeah, they're right. doing the. Uh, <laughs> they're they're offering cheaper tuition to engineers. I think we might have talked about this as a potential at some point, but they're Why? actually going a, going forward with this because Why? they need more. So they need more engineers in general, right? So Who? basically, they're. Uh, so the state does. I mean, they want to bring more jobs oh, right. and everything okay. like that. Oh, okay, so it's like... a state thing. Right. Okay. It's a state thing. Right, right, right. So they're trying to bring more right. jobs to the area. And in order to have more engineers, they're saying, well, if you become an engineer, <laughs> it'll be cheaper than if you're an English major. <laughs> How does that work? Does the government or does the state offer tax subsidies to the unis, to yeah, I think so. I mean, they own they own right. some of the schools, so that's that's the main right. thing. Because so I can't like, imagine that the schools would suddenly go, "Oh, we're just going to drop our fees in half to oh, no, support the state." Right? No, that's that's not going to happen. Right? So, no. so the state would have to subsidize that. Yeah, that's crazy, though. Right. I mean, uh, I don't know. I, I always wonder about that. I, I think about like the time. I mean, it was before when I was in school, but um, I guess it was toward the tail end of the tail end of it. I entered school. 
But, you know, like people going mm. into engineering because of the, you know, the exorbitant salaries that, you know, from the dot-com boom and stuff like that. Right. I was kind of entering at the end of that. And people were all like, oh, you know, if you go into engineering, it's a huge salary. But, like, eh, you know, it did. I, I, I don't know what that ended up happening from that. Like, if a, there was mm. a huge fallout from that or, or what that happened or if this would actually do the same kind of effect because it's just the the entry side of things. Right, because if you you know if engineering costs half as much as arts, then you're you know then you're going to go for engineering, right? Right, right. But you'll be miserable and you might not enjoy. Yeah, I mean, like yeah, that, because you won't enjoy it. it. Like if you don't enjoy engineering, I mean, and, and I think there's people out. I mean, I know some cranky cranky engineers, right? They don't enjoy yeah, engineering. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I know. It's like <laughs> so it's like maybe mm. maybe this isn't a good thing in the end, but uh, it's interesting regardless. I think. I mean, just yeah, the, no, of course. The cost, Maybe. the cost benefit. I mean, we were talking about cost earlier, but but the cost benefit of becoming an engineer versus becoming a, you know, a history How major. How will you know if something like that works, though? How will you know if a scheme like that works? I, it's hard to get a metric on that. It's, it is, but you know what the benefit of that is? If you're a politician, what? it doesn't matter. Hey, right? Yeah. yeah. It's, <laughs> oh, oh, we'll measure that in about ten years. Oh, I might be retired yeah. by then. Well, so. Way, way out of my term. I'm on my yeah, lifetime exactly. pension. Thank you very exactly. much. Exactly. Yeah. I'll be I'll be on a beach. Fat pension. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll Brilliant. land with my golden parachute. Yay. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Bastards. Oh, that's great. Oh yeah. man. Ugh. Yeah. Our MPL is so practically yeah, up. We have, what, what else we have, have we a got? couple yeah. couple uh, announcements before the end of the show. But yeah, one one thing. So so the uh, we talked about it. I think last year, and a couple people ended up going from the show. But uh, there's an analog aficionados party out in uh, right. Silicon Valley. Yep. If people are willing to go out there, I know a couple of people were out there or flew out there. Uh, Paul Rico. When, uh, when is it? That is coming up. November. Uh, uh, it's Wednesday. Well, hello, it's December. <laughs> yeah. It's December oh. 18th. Did I miss that? No, that's the old one then. 2013. Oh, it's posted. Uh, oh, sorry. February 16th. I'm sorry. Ah, right. <laughs> it's posted on the 19th of November. So the party is on February 16th in uh, Silicon Valley. So there's, we'll link it in and stuff. But uh, Oh, that freaked me out. Uh, <laughs> but we had some people go last year. And, and honestly, if you can go and you're interested in analog, there are some crazy awesome people that go out to that thing i mean so yep. uh check out the and do it and soon because they seem to be dropping like flies i know right unfortunately yeah. yeah yeah we need to get some more people on the show i keep thinking about that yep it's, it's a sad i mean it's just a sad reality right i mean we're kind of hmm. i wouldn't say we're exiting the heyday of it but it's just like all these huge names and you know like the people that you know from you know like like jim williams and bob peace and all them you know like you, you just know them from from being published so much and it's just you know they're they they were getting up there in age, and they both unfortunately passed away. And it's like, yeah, and then right. Hans Kamenzin passed away, and yeah, right. So, so in fifty years' time, people are going to say, "Oh, Chris Gamble died. Can't believe it." I'm never dying, Dave. He was the analog guy, right? You're going to live forever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, right. Singularity, <laughs> right? right. <laughs> oh boy. <sighs> yes. Uh, let's see. There was one other thing I thought. Um, no, I guess that's it. Well, then there's show news as well. So we we are going to take a little break. <laughs> um, yeah, we just decided this before the show, didn't we? We thought, oh, should we do, you know... It's the, weird this year, the right? The show's I mean, over it, Christmas, or should we, I don't know, yeah. record a and a show or something like that? Right, and, so we, uh, we, we usually just decided record... Well, we usually record and, and post it on Tuesdays, and this year that's both Christmas and New Year's, as it usually goes, because it's seven days apart. But um, mm. since it is the same day, it's just like, eh... So we're going to take a little break. Uh, and we were thinking for the first show of the year, we could do a QA and a show, though. So yeah, give people, where we, you know, we don't talk about our own shit. We just answer questions. And then try, right. not to go, not, try not to go off on too many tangents, I guess. Right. Right. And so people can post you know, questions to I'll, – I'll, uh, 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 I'll put a post up on the actual site proper. So you, know, you can leave comments there if, if you don't like Reddit. There's also our subreddit. You can also email us if you really want to. But hopefully those other two options – will suffice um but yeah if you know if you've got questions or if you're working on projects over the holidays that you know you run into something or you find something cool that's always mm-hmm. good and uh you know and we we always like the suggestions anyways but you know in, in this case uh that'll be a, a very specific q a show and then we can have a title that invo- in, uses the letter q i like that too <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't get to use that much no we don't yeah. i was thinking about uh, i i mentioned to dave was it last week, Dave? I said, oh, maybe we should move away from this three-letter letter thing next yeah, year. Yeah, that's right. And you said, yeah. no. 
<laughs> well, so what we'll, the hell we'll, would we move to? I don't Go know. Back I to, don't know. I don't know. Uh, Random I titles. Know. Oh, and that's the last announcement. Ideas, nice. well, yeah, so our titles are so hard to parse, right, if you're trying to find an old show. But, yes. so we're trying a new thing where we actually got some transcriptions done. Um, so we're just trying it out to start with. Uh, mm-hmm. We're getting four different shows transcribed. And it's pretty cool, you know, like like the first show was, you know, the last one. So uh, me, Dave, and Ian, and it was like 15,000 words. It's like a crazy amount of text. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, uh, the, the <laughs> benefit of that bullshit. is, yeah. it is, right? <laughs> it's just like, you could print that out and it actually will have a weight to <laughs> you it can now. smell it a mile away, yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but the benefit of that is Google can find it. And, and more specifically, if you're looking for old stuff and shows, we know how hard it is if you're like, if you're trying to go back and say, oh, well, I think, I think Dave said this really dumb thing about chip printing, you know, a couple months ago, <laughs> and <laughs> I really <laughs> want to find it. You can go back and actually have a contextual search now because we'll have... We'll have some uh, uh, transcriptions done. We're not going to do all of them because of the cost, mm-hmm. but you know we're trying. We'll try and do some of them going forward, just to you know hopefully have people mm-hmm. make it easier to find and stuff. And and we'll and we'll see how it goes as we go forward. But uh, thank you so much to the people that donate. Thank you to everyone yes, for please. participating. Right, exactly. And uh, you know if if you want to donate before the new year, uh, that'd be great too. But. You know, also just you know participating with the advertisers, we're, we're gonna probably have some new advertisers in the new year as well. Um, all that stuff really helps out. And I guess this, since since this is the last show of the year, we should thank all of you profusely. So thank you, thank you, thank you, <laughs> <laughs> thank you indeed. Yeah. Well, we can't leave the we can't leave 2012 without mentioning the five oh. most disruptive technologies of 2012. Oh, this is going to be the last one? Okay, I like this one. Uh, yeah, yeah, like, uh, yeah, let's go a bit over. It's the last show of the year, oh. right? So you, you've you put a link here to a, an article on QZ.com. Quartz. Yeah, Quartz, Quartz, Quartz is Quartz. a new tech site. And uh, Chris, Chris, uh, Christopher Mims is one of the articles. He used to be one of the writers at MIT Technology Review, and, and he went over there, oh, and right. I really like, okay. I like his writings. Very snarky and awesome. Another Christopher. Uh, there you go. Yeah. Anyway, the right. five most disruptive technologies of 2012. Let's go through them. Number okay. one, controlling, controlling computers, computers without, without touching, touching them. them. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Geez. They were doing this in the uh, 70s, in the 60s and 70s. Nothing new here. But not not as a mass market thing, right? I mean, that's the yeah, that's right. That's the main yeah. thing. So there was actually a chip, and actually, someone posted about this in the subreddit a while back. Uh, it's a microchip part that actually uh, senses electric fields, basically, um, are in proximity yeah, to the chip. It works exactly the same as the um, exactly the same as the uh, regular touch button ones, except it's a little bit more sensitive, and they've got some algorithms to detect three D. So. Right. Yeah, right, and that's cool. I mean, and and, and the big yeah. thing there is the mass market aspect of it, right? I mean, that's the mm. that's the killer thing is that if it's mass market, then you can start Will rolling it at other things. Will it recognize the middle finger gesture? <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you give your iPhone the middle finger, yeah, and it, right? <laughs> and it says, "I'm sorry." <laughs> yeah, Siri <laughs> says that, to... right? She's... Right? Yeah, yeah. Right. I didn't know you didn't want that. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, next one, number two, is the obvious one that was announced at that Google conference: the Google Glasses and augmented reality. Uh, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, I think it's you know they've been talking about this for a long time as well, talking about car windshields and everything like that. Uh, yeah, heads up know. displays, and once again, it's all tech. You know, there's nothing new in all this. They just put in modern technology. Spin right, the commoditization of, of hardware, yeah, yeah. right? I mean, and that's and yep. that's cool. And you know, I think the thing with this, I was actually thinking about Dave for this one because you know, when you have a camera, right? I mean, that's basically what Dave does with with EEV blog is a lot of you know, if you have people that are working on circuits or whatever, you can have like a first person view of what they're doing. And I think that's yeah, it's interesting going forward because you could not learn from a teacher, but learn from someone like Dave online from you know twenty thousand miles away. 12,000 miles, rather. I guess 20,000 miles, you'd start going yep. around again. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, like, it's just, uh, it's it's interesting from a, you know, a YouTube perspective and, and all mm-hmm. the other side stuff that more sensors on your body is cool. I like that. Cool. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Number three. Next up, we have um, the, the world's most cost-effective energy storage. They're talking about compressed air batteries here. No, I don't like anything yeah. that involves compressed yeah. and all that sort of. No, it's sort yeah. of. It just instantly says dangerous, exploding. You know, um, right? Well, they're no, talking but about this. Many this, battery uh, technologies. That's the holy grail of you know 
electric vehicles and home energy storage oh, yeah, and all sorts yeah. of stuff. So, Renewable you know, grids and stuff like yeah. that, right? So there's, yep. Right. That's and, and they were talking about happen. the young lady They're that just, uh, yeah. that actually improved the efficiency by like basically putting some mist inside the uh, the compressed air batteries, which is is interesting, you know, that right. that's all it took. And, and yeah, it's cool. But hmm. number four is kind of feeds off that because it's autonomous vehicles and electric vehicles. Um, you know, that's... Again, the that's going to be dependent on batteries. Autonomous vehicles are bullshit. You don't know, like those? They're, I like no, those. No, they're not going to happen in the next, you know, foreseeable you future. So? No, it's bullshit. Know, no, not bullshit. You, you wouldn't get in one? Call on I'd a... get in one. <laughs> you, you're an idiot. I trust them more than some of those idiots on the road. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. All right. We'll see. Not going to happen. All right. That's why it's something to watch, Dave. It's disruptive. Right. Yeah. Disrupt it. But no, if it's disrupted, it can't disrupt unless it actually penetrates the freaking market. Right? Yeah. I guess. If it doesn't penetrate the market, it's not disruptive. It doesn't change the market. How many people are going to buy autonomous vehicles in the next uh, drive your well, own? Oh, it's autonomous vehicles electric that drive vehicles. Them? Electric yeah, but it is. It doesn't is, matter. Is, huh. Imagine, uh, how about getting rid of every cabbie in the world, right? That would be disruptive. Johnny Cab, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. You know, from, you know, <laughs> what was it, uh, Total Recall? Welcome to, yeah. welcome to Johnny Cab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, <laughs> Total Recall, if you haven't seen it. Oh, God. It's yeah. so terrible. Great. I might have to go watch that this, this oh, holiday break. Oh, come on, it's now. great. It's good fun. I know. Oh, it's it's great. Yeah. Better than the remake. Yeah, they, 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 they just made a remake of that. I, yeah. I don't like the idea of a remake of no. a movie like that. No. no. It's got Big Arnie Arnold. in it. Arnold. Yeah. <laughs> it's terrific <laughs> anyway yeah no you never catch me jumping in a johnny cab anyway <laughs> okay. um and now they're talking about uh ultra cheap web devices um right they, which they we mentioned on here before the, people with the indian yeah. the the indian tablet that's uh forty dollars yeah. and then subsidized down to 20 an yep. android tablet which but is once again it's it's kind of similar to the one laptop per child bullshit right but I'd cheaper rather way cheaper that, I'd rather have those five people have, um, you know, clean drinking water and, you know, education and medicine than well, this is freaking education. access to the internet, you know. I mean, I mean, it, it uh, is education. Yeah, I know, but I'd rather have them, you know, actually <laughs> have, right. have the basics first rather than an hey, internet buddy, connection. Hey, 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 there, that's like five billion more amp hour listeners that we could potentially have. So. <laughs> right, okay, let's be <laughs> if selfish. If you are right. out there <laughs> and are listening, even if this is in the future... I, I'm for it. Remember, it was Dave that didn't want it, so <laughs> I, I hope there's a speaker on there or else I'll feel really dumb. <laughs> oh, right. it's tablet only, no speaker. Right, so little uh, Johnny in um, you know, in his little hut or pit in Ethiopia is sitting there with his you know, uh, tablet listening in to the amp hour, huh? I hope so. And if you are, <laughs> you're awesome. <laughs> we'll give you a shout-out, yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah, right in. Use Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh boy! Uh, oh man! But it's 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 an interesting fact that uh, most people like us in the Western world pay more for our internet access than uh, most people per month than uh, the majority of people earn in a year in those countries. Oh yeah, like it total. Is interesting. So you know, right? Yeah. It's hmm. right, right. Well, well that's a, that's I'd a good segue a into uh, of a no, human if, perspective there. If people. Uh, People find other uh, other charities to uh, donate to before the amp hour. You should do that in 2012 first. <laughs> yeah, I, <yep. laughs> we, we are secondary, but uh, yeah, <laughs> that is a good thing to do in 2012 is to support education and everything else. All right, man. Well, uh, that's done. Well, it's been another year. How many years we've been doing this shit? Two and a half. Two and a half now. Two I guess half. we've been around yeah. since 2010. So we'll be Jeez. entering our third year. Thanks, guys. Have a good uh, holiday and. Uh, Good New Year. Talk to you in the New Year. See you. Catch you later.